Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. Gedonia is an open world action RPG. Approximately 6 months ago I made a video about Gedonia where I talked about everything we knew about the game. Since then the developer of Gedonia decided to do some major design changes and the game is available on Steam ever since June 1st. It was released in early access and you can buy it for 10 bucks. Only one guy is working on Gedonia and considering all the work he managed to do so far that's quite impressive. It should be obvious that Gedonia doesn't have a huge budget, so you can't expect it to be the next Elder Scrolls or anything close to that. We'll talk about all the major features of Gedonia, I'll mention all the good and the bad stuff about this game and that should help you decide if you want to buy it or not. Before we jump right in, a quick word from today's sponsor. Idle Miner Tycoon is a simulation game that mixes mining management and earning tons of money to become rich. The goal of this game is to build gold resources and gain as much productivity and idle benefits as possible with the income that you make from the mine. You can do that by hiring managers and miners and as you gain more resources you can upgrade and level up everything in your mine like the warehouse, elevators, coal shafts etc. The game opens up after a few hours and you will get several continents to explore. Every week there is a new event mine to explore and you can do research in order to speed up the mining. There are different skins that you can get for all the workers in your mine. You can get Idle Miner Tycoon for free on Android and iOS, the link will be in the description. Gedonia is a really ambitious title for a one-man project. It's still rough around the edges, it needs a lot more patches and a lot more polishing that's for sure, but let's start from the beginning. When you start the game, you have the option to choose the gameplay mode. Open world is obviously the biggest gameplay mode, but it's always nice to have more options. In dungeons gameplay mode, you will explore randomly generated dungeons and collect loot, and arena is basically a horde mode. But let's talk about the most important gameplay mode, the open world. Before you start your adventure, you have the option to customize your character. Customization is pretty limited in the current version of the game. You have a couple of different options for head, hair and beard. If I would have to guess, the customization will probably improve at least a bit in the future. In the next character creation screen, you need to make an important decision. You'll get 4 stat points that you can allocate in strength, agility, intellect and charisma. You won't be able to change this later in the game, so choose carefully. These stats will determine what kind of a gear you can use, how fast you can run and dodge, how many companions you can take with you and things like that. My first character was a warrior with no intellect at all, which means that I didn't get any mana points. I wouldn't suggest doing this because magic in this game is one of the best features, but we'll get to that. When you're done with creating your character, the game gives you a short background story. Your parents died and you were raised by your uncle, you had a dream about the cave on top of the mountain that's close to your village and you had to get there. And this is your beginning area. You start off with a sword, but you can loot some more gear in the nearby chest. This is where you can experience the controls and the combat for the first time. You will get 2 attribute points that you can spend and that will shape your starting build. Gedonia has a lot of skills that you can learn, which are separated in the corresponding categories. You need to invest certain amount of points in the skill tree in order to unlock different active and passive abilities. This kinda reminds me of Titan Quest and Grim Dawn without additional stats that you get from putting points in the skill tree. Anyway, once you make up your mind, you will continue through the cave. There are a couple of simple enemies to fight here. I wasn't particularly impressed with how the melee combat works, but as I played more and got a couple of new skills, it became much more enjoyable. In order to use your active skills, you will need to drag your abilities from the skill tree to the hotbar. Most of melee skills require stamina. You use stamina for dodging and running as well. The amount of agility points that you invested in the beginning of the game affects your dodge. If your agility is low, you can only do a sidestep, which isn't that effective. Regular attacks with melee weapons can be chained into a combo. Animations are decent for this type of a game, but the combat can be really slow, especially in the beginning when you don't have a lot of skills. This is to be expected, but I think the general speed of the combat could be a bit faster. It's especially noticeable if you're using any kind of ranged attacks because the AI can have really slow reactions. Since I mentioned animations, when you strafe with your character it doesn't feel so smooth, but I'm pretty sure this will be fixed. Once you leave the starting cave, Gedonia offers you a true open world. Even though this is only about 10% of the content the developer plans for the game, the size of areas that you're going to explore are decent, but there is not much content in the game in its current state. The main quest is still not implemented, but you will find quests in the open world. The questing system itself has a lot of potential, because basically every quest that I found has more than a couple of ways to solve it, either through skill checks or some other methods. This is what I want to see in all RPGs actually, so Gedonia gets a huge plus for this. 
I don't want to spoil any quests, but there are some interesting outcomes. Another big feature in the game is factions and faction quests. You have a faction screen that you can open and you can start doing quests for your selected faction. You will notice when you kill certain enemies in the game that your reputation with different factions will increase or decrease. I wanted to buy some gear from these paladins, but since my reputation was low, I couldn't do that. I'm guessing that all factions work like this. My second character was a battle mage and I had a lot more fun with this character because my warrior didn't have any mana at all, so I couldn't learn any spells. I would definitely recommend going with a couple of schools of magic if you plan to play this game. You can mix and match skills however you want and possibly create a really unique build. It definitely seems like a flexible system. Besides all the combat skills, you can also learn speech and crafting skills like blacksmithing, letterworking, tailoring, alchemy, cooking and enchanting. I really enjoyed gathering the materials for blacksmithing and making my own gear, especially because the exploration in Gedonia is quite enjoyable. There are some interesting locations to visit, with a decent amount of mystery behind them. I see a lot of potential for the final product, I just hope this guy will be able to pull it off. Gedonia is still in a very early stage of development and it feels unfinished, but this was to be expected. I will keep my eye on every major update for this game, so stick around if you want to see that. Don't forget to subscribe for more content and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads. Special thanks to my Patreons and if you as well want to become one of them, all the links are in the description. Patreon is definitely the best place to directly support my work and every contribution is highly appreciated. That would be all and I'll see you in the next one.